So we can calculate the transmission delay. Note we have two types of frames, data and ACK. Data frame, 1,000 bytes of data, 20 bytes of header. Data rate, 1 megabit per second. The transmission delay of the data, we have 1,020 bytes divided by 1 megabit per second. Squeeze that in. Why 1,020 bytes? 1,000 bytes of data, 20 bytes of header. We must transmit all of that, so that will give us how long it takes. Convert your byte to bits, you get 8,160 bits. 8,160 bits divided by 1 million gives you 8,160 microseconds. Eight one six zero microseconds. You can calculate also the propagation delay. You know the link distance, you know the the speed. We'll need that, so let's calculate it. Uh, how far? We've got two kilometer link. 2 by 10 to the power of 8 meters per second. Which is how many microseconds? Someone calculate for me. And it's nice to keep the same prefix, micro. It makes our, our calculations easier when we sum. 10 microseconds. Use your calculator, fine. The other thing we'll need in a moment is we know that we send data from A to B what does B send back to A? What does B send to A? Anyone? What does B send to A? What's the name of the frame? An act frame. How big is the act frame? Act frame is 20 bytes, so we can calculate the transmission delay of the act frame. We'll need that, so we'll calculate that here. Twenty bytes. It's just header. There's no data. Divided by one megabit per second. What do you get? One hundred and sixty microseconds. And the other delay we have, which is in the question, is the processing delay. B, whenever it receives a data frame, takes one microsecond to process that. And then it is ready for more. I will not write that, we'll draw it in a moment. So now let's start drawing our, our diagram of the stop and wait flow control and note the times that each step takes.
this is the, the date this is the data frame and represents the transmission of the data frame. I'll denote data one because we've actually got three data frames to send. Let's say we that's the start of the process, so let's allocate the time and say that started at time zero at this point. And we'll keep track of the time as we go. So time zero is when everything starts. I will not write the, the units of microseconds just to save space. So zero microseconds. Let's count in microseconds. I start transmitting the data frame at time zero. At what time have I finished transmitting? Start at zero, finish at time 8160. Easy. So think of this point here as 8160. We finished transmitting at time 8160. What time does B fully receive data frame 1? Eight one seven zero. The way to think of it is that okay, at time zero I start sending. The signal representing that first bit of the data frame comes out of my computer and starts propagating across the link. So that signal representing the first bit arrives at the destination B, what is it, 10 microseconds later. If it's transmitted at time zero, the first signal will be rep will be received at time 10. But then I send the second bit out of my computer and that propagates across. And from the perspective of when is the entire frame received, I send the last bit at time 8160. That last bit, or the signal representing that last bit, comes out of my computer at 8160 and it propagates across the link and arrives 10 microseconds later, so it arrives at 8170. And that's what we care about. When does the last bit arrive? Because we cannot do anything with the frame until we've got the entire frame. Sometimes we may try and draw, if I go back, like in this case, I tried to illustrate, okay, the first bit arrives at this time, the last bit arrives here. But just to keep the diagram clear, I will not draw the first bit arriving. Well, most times I won't. I may for this one. But usually we care about the last bit because that's when the frame is fully arrived. So that's the one of interest. My diagram is not to scale. Okay? And yours, uh, yours does not have to be either. So that would be the arrival of the first bit. More importantly, the arrival of the last bit. First bit would arrive at time 10 because there's a propagation time from here to here of 10 microseconds. The last bit would arrive at 8170. Then what happens? What does B do now? B just received the entire frame. They start checking it. They process that frame. Checking the, the destination is correct, checking the parity bit or other information, using the data, and it takes some time. And in the question, we said it takes one microsecond per, per frame. In other cases, it would be different. So it takes one microsecond to process. So 8171. After we've processed, after we've processed, we can then send back the act saying I'm ready for more. So at 8171, I start transmitting my act. 
and the act will take 160 microseconds to transmit. So we'll draw the transmission of the act. Act 1. It's the first act. The number is not, not so important. When have we finished transmitting? Start at 8171. Plus 160 brings us to 8331. That's this time. And when does it arrive at A? Another 10 microseconds later. So the ACK fully arrives at A at time 8341 and then We've finished that single data frame transfer. We can move on to the next one. A is allowed to send the next piece of data. It had three in this example. Transmits the next one. And you'll see that it follows the same process. Assuming the timing's the same. 8160 to transmit. Another 10 to propagate. One to process. 160 to transmit the act back plus another 10 to propagate, and then we'd receive the second act. And then we can move on to the next data frame. But just focusing on the first one, any questions about this exchange? I will not draw the, the next two frames, but it would be the same shape, but Instead of starting at time 0, we effectively start at time 8341 plus 8160 plus 10 plus 1 plus 160 plus another 10 and we'd get back to the reception of the second act. When is the act for the third frame received? Okay, without drawing it, can you calculate when, okay, or maybe easier, when is the act for the second frame received? When is the act for the second frame received? Think about it from the perspective, how long did it take to transfer one frame and get an act back? Started at zero, took us 8341 microseconds. And in the second frame, it would be the same. Nothing changes. It's the same data size, same propagation, same processing, same act transmission. So in this example, the second frame would take another 8341 microseconds, bring us to 16,682 plus the third frame another 8341. In this simple example it's the same for each frame transfer. One frame transfer takes 8341 microseconds and each subsequent takes the same amount of time. And I will not draw or even try to scale. The second one would be two times this.
and definitely not to scale, the reception of the third act will be three times 8341, which is, I have a number somewhere, 25023. So without drawing the, the exchange or even keeping it to scale, the third act would be received at this time. Now, the question asks what was the throughput? Well, there's different ways to, to think about the throughput, but the best way is to think what if there weren't just three frames, but we kept sending frames? What if we had three, four, five, a million frames? Or an infinite number of frames being sent? Then we just repeat this, this pattern, just keep repeating it. Think from A's perspective. What is the rate at which A is sending original data? Again, the data rate of our link is one megabit per second. That is the rate at which A sends bits across the link. But what we're interested in is, what is the rate at which A sends original data over a long period of time? Look at A. Here's the data frame. Remember the data frame is made up of header plus data. The data frame, only, one, only some part of it is real data. There's a small part which is header. The purple part I tried to illustrate, that's the original data. The other part is the header, the 20 bytes of header. So, from A's perspective, at what rate is it sending original data if we keep doing this forever how many so think about how much original data it sends per period of time well for one frame transfer it takes 8341 microseconds how much original data it was a thousand bytes Remember, our frame was 1,000 bytes plus 20 bytes of header. So every frame transfer, we deliver, a, or we send 1,000 bytes of original data, and it takes 8341 microseconds. The next frame transfer, we deliver, sorry, we send the same amount of origi original data, and it takes the same time. So we keep going at this 1,000 bytes every 8341 microseconds. So that's the rate at which we send original data. 1,000 bytes divided by 8341 microseconds. Assume we keep going forever. So A is sending 1,000 bytes of real data every 8341 microseconds. Then, how much is B receiving? Well, everything that A sends, B eventually receives. There's nothing lost, there are no errors. So if A is sending 1,000 bytes every 8,341 microseconds, that means that B must be receiving 1,000 bytes every 8341 microseconds. Because everything that is sent is received. 
and you can actually check that and if you've kept drawing this diagram you look at from when the first piece of data is received until the second one it would be 8341 microseconds and if you kept going every 8341 microseconds B would receive data in this case there's no data lost so everything that is sent must be received And that's our definition of throughput. Throughput is at what rate do we receive original data? A thousand bytes every 8341 microseconds and someone will calculate for me because I think I maybe I have the answer someone will calculate the exact value for me A thousand times eight to convert the bits and divide by your time of eight three four one nine five nine one one eight about. Nine hundred and fifty nine thousand bits per second. <coughs> What's the efficiency when we use this stop and wait protocol? Our link rate is one million bits per second we're delivering data at a rate of 959,000 bits per second so the efficiency is 95.9 percent that is throughput divided by our link data rate just a reminder the data rate So we have a link that we can send a million bits per second, but we're on average only sending 959,000 of real data. zero point nine five nine or as a percentage ninety five point nine percent so with this protocol we've got our link but there are some overheads involved we don't get one hundred percent efficiency because we spend some time doing other things than sending original data So we can think the overhead in this case is 4.1 percent. That is, is that right? 4.1 percent of the time we're not sending original data across the link. 
95.9% .9 of the time we are sending original data across the link. What is the overhead? Well, we may see it from the picture. That is, what contributes to the overhead? Look at this period of 8341 microseconds, the, the frame transfer. Look at the purple period. That's the transmission of the original data. Sometimes we're sending header. That contributes to the overhead. That's not the real data being sent. And from A's perspective, sometimes we're waiting. Again, that's overhead. The not longer we spend waiting, the less efficient will be. And we can do it the same from B's perspective. It's receiving original data except when it's receiving the header. That header reception is overhead. And sometimes B is transmitting an ACK, sometimes it's processing, and I think if you draw the, the next data frame, sometimes it's waiting for the next data frame. So in terms of using the link, we're only using it 95.9% .9 of the time to send the real data. And that's our measure of efficiency. Any questions on these calculations? I think you should probably draw the diagram in full for the three frames just to be sure you see what's happening with that it repeats each time. And the other thing to be make sure you're clear on is the fact that if we're sending at this rate, by the fact that we're not losing any data, we must be receiving at the same rate. Because everything that is sent is received. Nothing is lost, and we don't receive more than what is sent. That's not possible. And hence, we can get the throughput at the receiver, the efficiency of the, the use of this protocol. Any questions? We'll be back to our quizzes this week. Our assignment, which will be released either this week or next week, will be on this. It'll be on doing some experiments in, your, in, in groups to to measure the efficiency and throughput under different situations. So I'll give you some software to, to learn more about flow control and even error control. I want higher efficiency. How do I get it? How do I get this to go up, the efficiency? Reduce the data rate. OK? You reduce the data rate. But what does that change? Reducing the data rate will increase our transmission delay. Okay, so not necessarily. In some cases, yes. But I think from you see the, in the equation, reducing the data rate would increase the efficiency, except be careful. Reducing the data rate increases the transmission delay of both the ACK and the header. But yes, I think if you run through the numbers, in most cases, that would help. If you look at this picture, what else can we do? Think from the sender's perspective. When does it waste time? Waiting for the ACK, the sender. Think of it's transmitting the header. That's wasting because... If we had less header to transmit, we would have a smaller total time, but the same amount of data would have higher efficiency. So keep the header as small as possible, but sometimes we can't control that. The other time that the sender spends waiting is waiting for an ACK. Well, again, that is due to the propagation delay, which we normally cannot control. It's depending upon the, the link and the ACK transmission time. If we make the ACK transmission time smaller, we'd wait less time and we'd get the response earlier, giving us higher efficiency. 
So we need to consider these different factors of propagation delay, transmission time of data and ACK, and the header size to determine how to maximize our efficiency. And there are some trade-offs that we'll see over time. Generally, the larger the propagation delay with respect to our data transmission, the less efficient we are. Did we get to the end? I'll show you an example of that. You don't have to calculate or draw, but just the concept. I will show you this again tomorrow, but just to illustrate the trade-offs. The first case on the left is a case, and I haven't put numbers to it, Here's the transmission of the data, and I've tried to highlight that as the green bar, transmitting of the original data, relative to the total time, the red bar. We want the green one to be large relative to the red bar. That's high, more efficiency. Green is representing the time to transmit original data. The red is the total time. In our case, the green bar length would have been 8,000 microseconds and the red one 8341. We want the green one to be large compared to the red one. Here's a case where we increase the data size. Instead of 1,000 bytes, maybe 10,000 bytes. Small header, one large data frame. It makes the transmission time larger means we spend a lot of time transmitting original data and relative to that only a small amount of time waiting. This center one is more efficient than the left one. By increasing the, the data size and keeping everything else the same, we can increase the efficiency. And it's this increasing the payload, which really means the original data or decreasing the data rate. Like you said, decreasing the data rate increases our efficiency in this case. With everything else is fixed. The other way, compare the center and the right one, large data frame, if we had a high propagation delay, would be less efficient. Increased propagation delay in this case reduces the efficiency brings us down again. The middle one's the best case in terms of efficiency. So in general it's about we want a large transmission time relative to the propagation time. We'll do some more analysis of that and give some more examples tomorrow. And we'll show that one again. What you'll do before tomorrow's lecture, just confirm these calculations in your own mind. Make sure you're clear on how to come up with this. There's always an exam question or a quiz question. Here's stop and wait. Here are the numbers. Tell me the time it takes to transfer the data or tell me the throughput. Let's stop there and continue tomorrow. <laughs>